Marcia, Nancy, something on your leg. What is that? It's a unicorn. If you get any closer, you're not going to like it. Does it say Satan on it? Does it say Satan down there? Huh? Can you read? Does it say Satan? Can you read? I asked you a question, bitch. Does it say Satan? A clip that I recently uploaded from the 1988 prostitution episode of the Morton Downey Jr. show went viral on TikTok, amassing over 400,000 views, 8,000 likes, and 600 comments in less than two weeks. The clip features a woman named Nancy Grace with a tattoo of a unicorn and the word Satan on her leg. The comments are full of people debating whether this is the same Nancy Grace that became famous in the mid-2000s as a TV journalist and legal commentator who hosted a show titled after herself on HLN for more than a decade. The top comment with over 800 likes says, just to be clear, this woman isn't that Nancy Grace. Others say, see, old school TV was always amazing, lol. Her name might be Nancy Grace, but it's not the Nancy Grace. The people today would have a meltdown over Morton Downey Jr. TV in the 70s and 80s was out of control. A handful of individuals disagree with the popular sentiment and argue that it is, in fact, the Nancy Grace we all know today. And it isn't that far-fetched. Both Nancy Graces are from Georgia. This appearance took place in 1988, eight years before Nancy Grace would make her formal television debut as host of Trial Heat on Court TV, now known as True TV. The famous Nancy Grace was born in 1959, so she would be 29 when this broadcast took place. No one knows exactly what she looked like at this time or what she was doing, so it might just be her. This clip has quickly grown more viral than Nancy Grace's entire professional TikTok presence, so I think it's only fair for her to respond by confirming or denying this claim. Otherwise, there's no way for us to know for sure whether this is really that Nancy Grace or not. Next, I'm going to go over each segment of the prostitution episode. In the first segment of the episode, we're introduced to prostitute Nancy Grace. There's a prostitute. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Wally. How you doing? Uh, all right, relax. Nancy, l- let me start out. Does your background compare to the drug addicted abused girl that we hear so much about? What's your background? I mean, you weren't you weren't sodomized by your father? No, not you know, quite. Weren't sent out to work at an no, early age? No, one sent me out anywhere. You just like it, huh? I didn't say that either. <laughs> now, really, why, how, why did you become a prostitute? Good money. You, you weren't making good money at anything else? I mean, you sit here, you look like a school teacher. Everybody has their own opinion of what they're supposed to look like. The okay. money's good. The money's good. How much money can you make in a week? Enough. Enough. I'm not going to put it down. Uh, uh, well, let me ask you this. Let me, let me ask you this. How much do you charge for a trip? I don't charge trip. What do you do? People pay me for my company. Oh, so you're an escort. You're That's an escort? That's putting it. You're not so. I go out and I watch people, men like you that like to dress up in ladies' clothes and parade right around. Men like me who like to dress up in ladies' clothes. Yeah. Who the who the hell's been peeking in my closet, huh? You go that's what you do? You watch guys who like to dress Sometimes. up in ladies' clothes? Um, you never I, have you never I have, have sex. A with I'm married, I don't do that anymore. I go out and I watch men like you, as I said. Dress up in ladies' clothes or people that like to be tied up in spanked or certain yeah. fantasies. Yeah. You, you used to, though, before you got married, turn trip. Pardon? You used to, before you got married, consummate yeah. the uh, relationship. Before I got married. Before you got married. Who did you marry? Who did I marry? A very nice gentleman. Was he one of A your Yankee, tricks? unfortunately. Was he one of your tricks? We met through an agency. Met through an agency? Wait a second, hey, well, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to put this all together. But uh, you, uh, you think what you do should be legalized? Yes. You think prostitution in general should be legalized? Uh, yes, as long as they use people that are over there, you know, legal age. Well, as a matter of fact, we were going to have some more prostitutes uh, in here tonight. But I can tell you the hypocrisy of it all. State law doesn't allow us to have anyone under the age of 18 
in my studio and the prostitutes were 14 and 15. Working, working the streets of New York. What do you think about that? I think it sucks. How old were you when you started prostituting? 31. 31? You mean you had a regular job before? Yeah, well, you know. Well, what was your regular job? What is, what is your education uh, background? Pardon? What is your educational background? I finished high school, been to college. I worked as a legal secretary, um, getting a degree in computer science and engineering. Next, Janine Hansen tells the audience that the average age of prostitutes is 22. The average age of prostitutes is 22, and so they're very young. And we have a situation in which most prostitutes, 80% of them have been sexually abused at home. 63% have run away from home. So you see we have a, a series of victimizations here, and they go on being victims as prostitutes. And they aren't in it for the money, although they say that, because 83% of them don't have a dime to make on the next week. And so they're in a situation of dire financial straits most of the time. 80% of them have pimps. Therefore, they're getting the money, not the, not the prostitute. Did you have and a I pimp when you were an average prostitute? Well. Did you ever have a pimp when no. you were a prostitute? No. Well, how'd you they get in, How were you able to get into the business thing? Pick up the yellow pages and open it up to either where it says escort or massage. Pick up the phone. And those, are, those are prostitutes. I'm not going to say that's what they do or they don't do. I can't speak to anybody else. Did you have an ad in the yellow pages? No. Let your fingers do the walking do. Get no <laughs> When, when you, Nance, Nance, when you were a prostitute before you started just watching men like me dress up in women's clothes who like to get tied up in spanks, uh, when, when you were doing that, uh, before you were doing that and you were doing prostitution as we look upon as me and myself is weren't you worried about getting some weirdo in the room with you or something i mean that's why right? we work with a reputable agency the reputable agency yeah, had already investigated the, the guy huh? that, you know same clientele for five ten fifteen years that's I'm, why you go out and you see people that wouldn't do that like you know professional people doctors, and you never lawyers, walked in the room and some guy players. was standing there with his pet sheep or something no <laughs> do you do that okay. How do, how does your how does your husband react to all of this? I mean, he met you on a date set up by a reputable agency, and I assume he paid you that night and you got it on, right? No, he paid me. We went out to dinner. Not everybody that goes out and gets paid for their company goes to bed with people. See, that's a misconception. What, a misconception? What? What do you guys? I mean, but you're ready to go to bed if that's what the guy wants to do. It's right? up to the young lady. You're paying her for her time, for her company. You're not paying her to go to bed with you. Over the phone, cop turned call girl Norma Jean Almanavor talks criminalizing prostitution from a California prison where she is serving a sentence. Uh, Norma Jean is a former call girl. She's also was a police officer, and she's written a book called Cop to Call Girl about her experience. Unfortunately, she's now in jail at the California Rehabilitation Center, and she's been in for 10 months. At least on one count of pandering. Norma Jean, how are you? Well, I could be much better, thank you. All right, I know you've only got a few minutes on the telephone, but yes. uh, what do you think about legalization of prostitution? Well, I'm in favor of decriminalization because I think that when a person becomes an adult, one should be able to decide what kind of standard morality to live by. And I was listening to you soon. Of course, uh, Janine Hanson and I, I believe, uh, were on another show last year on the Donahue Show. That's right, Norma Jean. And, uh, you know, even if, uh, if everything she said was true, which it's not, uh, to put people in prison because they don't save their money and to put them in prison because they were uh, abused by their parents, this is an absurd sort of thing to do. And, of course, the prison law here in California is, is highly overcrowded. And uh, I think that it's about time that people stop going to prison for making consenting adult choices and uh, when people violate other people's rights, that's the time that they should go to prison. Norma Jean says she decided that if she was going to screw the public, she might as well get the going rate. Why did you become a prostitute? I mean, do you like it so much and were you so ugly that you couldn't get all you needed? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, I became a prostitute because I decided if I was going to see the public, I might as well get the going rate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Janine, when you, well, what do you think when you hear an answer? I mean, I even see a smile on your face. Well, I feel sorry for her, and I feel sorry for a lot of other women that haven't had any better choices. As I said, 80% well, have of them choice. sexually abused. Oh, no, 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 no. I have better choices, but that was the best choice I could make. Unfortunately, most of them end up with nothing in the end, and the sad thing is, is that it really... Well, some of them do end up with something crimes. in the end, too. Yeah. Um, You, you you seem to be, Nancy, getting a little bit uh, bent out of shape to listen to all this stuff. I mean, uh, how long can you keep doing what you're doing? How long can you keep it, keep it up? As long as men want to dress up in ladies' clothes. Next, more at last, while hearing Nancy Grace talk about famous men who like to be dominated. Guys like me who like to dress up like women. You've had famous clients. Like who? Um, Philadelphia Eagles football player. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles football player? Yeah. Likes and, to dress uh, up in women's clothes? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, I Philadelphia love to player. tell Harry Carson who that is. And doctors, lawyers, judges. Policeman and Judges, talk I show can host. understand. <laughs> and the talk show host? Talk show host. Bill Bob. No, it wasn't Sorry. Bill Bob. Uh, it was not Bill Bob. A talk show host in Philadelphia? I didn't say that. All I said was it wasn't Bill Bob. But it was a talk show host. Can't you share it with us? No. Can't share it? No. Nope. Is he on a national show or a local show? I want to get a hint here. Is he on a national show or a local show? I'm not saying. I do not name names and no ministers. No. No ministers. No ministers. I'm God, wouldn't you like to know who that talk show host is? Who dresses up with like girls? Fred Cherry is introduced as a consumer of sexual services who also happens to be an anti-prostitution law activist. You obviously got rid of that very early. Uh, let me ask you a question. You represent an organization called Jaguar. And Jaguar Johns and Call Girls United Against Repression. A not-for-profit corporation organized under the laws of the state of New York. I'll tell you, it isn't often that we can debate the prostitution issue with the customers. Why are you willing to admit that you go out with prostitutes when it's almost a taboo subject in our society? Well, uh, because I feel I'm oppressed, and the only way to get... You're oppressed? Yes, Why? as a John, I'm oppressed, because it's against the law. And and because uh, my... Can't you get laid anyplace else? I'm... <laughs> I'm in bad health. I've been, in, I've been in bad health all my life, and I can't get out there that much. Also, the fact that I'm so thin makes me unattractive. You're not unattractive. That's what you say. Do you, you think he's unattractive? unattractive? Yes. Huh? No. She doesn't well, think you're unattractive. I didn't get, se- you? I didn't get sex for the first time what? in my life till I was 30. You and that 30? was with a prostitute. Oh. That was with a prostitute? That was with a prostitute, yes. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. Let me, let's get serious here for just a second. And Janine, if you have any questions, jump right in here, all right? Let me ask you something. You didn't get sex till you were 30. Yes. You were told you were unattractive. I wasn't told I was unattractive. I, I, because I, I was trying to meet women. I was trying to Did live. Did you because date? I, I tried to guess I dated, but nobody would go out with me on a second date. <laughs> Well, is there a possibility? Yeah. Is there a possibility there was something else wrong with you? Well, as a matter Were fact, you too aggressive? Did no, you have no. rat breath? I mean, no, what was no, it? No, no, no. As a matter of fact, at the time, I was even thinner than I am now. I was, I was around 100 pounds, and I'm five foot ten. Now that's kind of thin, isn't it? Under 105 foot ten? Uh, yeah, I was. I'm five foot ten, and I was less than 105 pounds. Now that's a bit thin, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. If you put on a condom, you look like a walking. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but can I go? You started, you started going with prostitutes. Yes. Fred Cherry admits to paying $160 for sex regularly. I can tell you how much I pay now. How much? I pay my, I give my girlfriend $160 every time she sees me. She's your girlfriend? Yes, she's my girlfriend. Okay. She, you know, you see the suit I'm wearing? Yeah. She, put, she went to the store with me and she helped me select it. Okay. Hmm. Do you have... Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, wait a minute, I'll tell you something uh, else. Janine, you heard, you heard, Nor- you heard Norma Jean Almadova. I don't know what to say. Before. I, I can't believe it, that somebody would actually be on national television advertising if they lived that way. It's incredible to me. I think it's, I think it's unfortunate. I think he's and got I think a lot of guts. 
I, I think there I think there ought to be. I don't know why there are more guys. Oh, well, uh, Fred, let me ask you. You really think of this girl as your girlfriend? Right? I am, absolutely. Let me give you an example. Would you marry her if, you, if she I don't married? believe in I, I don't think marriage is for me. I don't think I am suited for marriage. That's probably right. Thank you. All right. Okay. There are some people who are not suited for marriage. Well, sure. obviously, I had that problem once. I've been married three times, but I'm, <laughs> I'm suited now. Well. About people who want to go out and do their own thing and go with prostitutes or whatever they feel like it, men or women, and then they expect society and the public and the rest of us to pay for it. Because right now, up to 25% of prostitutes on the street have AIDS. There's all kinds of other diseases which they have. And you go out there and spread that and have your good time, and then you end up in the hospital and can't pay for that. You say you aren't in good health now, and then you and I, the rest of us that aren't doing that, that haven't chosen that lifestyle, we have to pay for that. And what? all the other problems that it brings. And I don't want to. I'm not interested in paying for your perverted lifestyle. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. First of all, first of all, first of all, I do, I do not spread diseases. I, I use, I can't practice safe sex. I've never had any uh, diseases yet, except, unless you count the, the crabs. Unless you count what? Unless you count the crabs. Unless you count the crabs. I mean, you don't get hospitalized. You do not get hospitalized well, with the crabs. Wait a second, for all we know, he's a ball player and he's someone else's jock strap. Excuse me. First of all, there's a difference. There's prostitutes that work the street and prostitutes that work agencies. There's a big difference there, lady. Trust me. I've been in the business. They all I've been, do the in, the, I've been in the business almost eight years and I've never, ever had anything, much less crab. You take a bath, you wouldn't have me though. All right, but Fred, Fred, do you have, and I think this is important, do you have what society would consider normal sex with this lady? Absolutely, certainly. All right. And how can you be sure she doesn't bring home a disease? As, as uh, Miss Hansen says, very possibly uh, one, this prostitute doesn't have the disease tonight when you sleep with her, but tomorrow when you sleep with her, she got it from someone the day before. Because I practice safe sex. And safe sex is baloney, Fred. No, it is not. You use a condom. Right, right, right. That is only effective. They originally said 70% of the time, all right? Now, they say if it's used anally, it's effective 10% well, of the I'm time. I'm not doing anything anally, and I'm not using... Hold <laughs> on, oh, no, man. So, you know... Credit where credit is due. Oh, At least on. Fred knows that the anus is an exit, not an entrance. All right. <laughs> and wait a minute. Let me fin let me finish. I I don't use those uh, sheep. Uh, you know those condoms made from sheep gut. I use the latex condoms and the American ones at that. And they're supposed, they're safer than the European ones. How often how often do you pay one hundred and sixty dollars for your girlfriend? Once a week. Once a week. You're yeah. earning pretty good bucks. Next, Mort gets sadistic with Nancy Grace. Anybody. I don't sure go don't. out. I you didn't... sure don't, but honey, you wanted to because you brought your ass here. I didn't rush you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You call, they called me. They your called people, you. Your people here yeah. called me. They paid my transportation. Yeah, here. we pay everyone's okay. transportation. All right. But don't tell me I brought my ass here because my ass is none of your business. Your ass, I wouldn't want to have my business. Don't worry. I'm not just full of pickles and just as full of you are. This is Valerie. This is Valerie. This is Valerie. Oh, very cool. Let me hear what Fred says. Let's just, let's, let's hear what, let's hear what the human has to say. <laughs> Downey, you are a pervert too, and your perversion is, is verbal sadism. Verbal sadism. Yeah, that's what your perversion is. All right, where, where have I been sadistic, Fred, been, my this, dear this, boy? Sadistic to this lady here. Yeah. Sadistic to That's her? That's right. We're verbally sadistic I to I don't this know lady. why you can't get a girlfriend, babe. You are so, you are so condescending to some bitch that you amend. There you go again. There you go again. There you're doing it again. 
Uh, you know, the way you're acting uh, is just symptomatic of the whole problem of prostitution. You have been very disrespectful to her no matter what her position is. Like and you. that's precisely, precisely one of the reasons why prostitution is bad for society. It makes women objects. It makes them subject you to all kinds of physical and mental abuse. They have to uh, subject themselves to every form of rape. Get up and walk and off. Off. Janine Hansen raises some troubling figures, suggesting that legalized prostitution has resulted in high rape rates for the state of Nevada. Ten miles from the largest brothel, we have a rape rate five times the national average. And it's just symptomatic of the whole process, which is disrespectful to women and disrespectful to the family unit. Janine, is possibly, is possibly the reason for your high rape rate in your area, the fact that your, your casinos are open 24 hours, you're serving booze 24 hours, people are getting drunk, they're not knowing what the hell they're doing and they're going out and bothering people. you got some girl coming up to serve you with her boobs coming out of her mouth. They're so high. I mean, I don't, I don't think, that, I think that those things probably contribute as I well as too. the fact that we have the highest <coughs> readership of pornographic magazines along with Alaska. But I really feel it's too bad. It's too bad that all of these things... All of these things contribute to the degradation of women and the family, and that society has to pay for those things. We have to pay for the broken lives. We have to pay for the disease. We have to pay for it when we have not chosen to live that way. And your attitude towards her today is simply one that is expressed towards all women when they are viewed as prostitutes or sex objects. And I think it's really a sorry uh, attitude for My attitude's the same towards men who've got to go out like poor Fred here and pay 160 bucks You've and think they're getting it off. Eric Nadler, the senior editor of Penthouse Magazine, joins the show to talk about the benefits of legalized prostitution. Scholarly dissertation now on prostitution. You favor the legalization. What types of benefits would society and prostitutes receive through uh, legalization? Well, I think uh, in the sexual area, the society flourishes when a uh, thousand flowers bloom. And what I have heard from this uh, loudmouth station over there is the most intolerant um, kind of ayatollism uh, as far as sex goes um, that I've heard recently. But it's so typical of the fanatic wing of American politics where you reside you happily. You can make your point without calling names, or do you no, have to? No, you're standing by the loudmouth. That's all. Um, that's what I say. The the point that I'd like to make about you is that you have no real power in the society. The sexual revolution is occurring and it's leaving you by the way station. You believe only in sex within marriage and probably you're against 90% of sexual acts within uh, that marriage anyway. You know, you are not representative of the American public. You're a bitter, uh, bitter woman who does not, who does ah, not conform to the sexual revolution. And I have, heard, I, have heard, I have heard this victimization argument all across the country during the Reagan Meese years. You know, Ed Meese sent a porn commission out to take Playboy and Penthouse out of America's 7-Elevens. And you know what? Playboy and Penthouse is the safest sex you can have because you never got AIDS from a magazine. But that didn't stop you and your and that's And that's where 57% of rapists have read softcore porn like Playboy and Penthouse immediately before going out to claim a victim. Don't tell me your and pornography does not create victims. And 93% have probably eaten dinner before claiming four, a victim. Must four. be something to catch up, right? One out of four. <laughs> now, for, two, for, for two long years, during, during the meet years, we've heard the federal government practically call our nation perverts. And you know what? We're sick of it because we're not perverts. We're just normal humans trying to have a good time in a healthy, happy, normal way. And that includes sex. And that is Eric, healthy, and it isn't uh, healthy. Let me ask Eric, what is a healthy, happy, good way? Between two consenting adults, I would say uh, practically anything goes. Practically as long anything. as somebody else is willing to foot the bill for your perversion. Hey, he's is smoking right? cigarettes. He's going to be maybe in the lung uh, cancer institute. Why aren't you taking on the tobacco companies that are bothering us here? Well, you know what? I'm concerned about my children. I'm concerned about my children. I'm concerned about my children and other people's children. The FBI has told us that one out of four girls at 12 years old will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. By who? Most of the people. By who? It doesn't Mo matter. Mo by yeah, who. it matters. All of it them, matters. Almost, without exception, have been pornographic consumers. Consumers of pornography in every form. Whenever what they go in to find child molesters, Calvin Klein ads, they find movie of the week. I mean, pornography. Uh, pornography which is, sexually is everything explicit. from the most. Uh, from things like Playboy and Penthouse to the most perverted kinds of sexual violence. How about and New York Times Sunday Magazine advertisements? Have violent. you seen those? You're most probably upset about those. I'm not you? reading the New York Times while I'm here. I could tell. 
Janine, Janine, when he says, when Eric says, uh, and I'm going to scrap the consenting adults part, all right? A married couple, he says, well, you'd probably be uh, opposed to sex, 90% of the sex that he would consider normal, all right? Eric goes on to talk about how the U.S. government set up brothels for soldiers in Vietnam. The military, the military in uh, Vietnam set up brothels for the men. That's right. So if, if they admit, if the government in that sense admits that men need that type of, uh, of companionship, why then are they so intransigent about uh, the legalization of uh, prostitution stateside? Well, uh, they are concerned about the uh, pure prudery and the puritanical strain in this country that still exists to this day. And uh, that's why no one wants to go out on a limb and lead a campaign for the uh, decriminalization of it. But if you look in the de facto sense, I mean, it is not a high priority. There are no major politicians leading an anti uh prostitution drive in this country because they know it's political suicide. Well, I, you know, after Janine? World War II in Nevada, they, when, when the army came in in Nevada, they simply closed down all the brothels in Nevada completely. And that's when legalized prostitution in the Reno area in Washoe County was eliminated and then the people voted it out. And so the government did come in and close everything down because they were concerned about disease, which we all need to be concerned about still. Well, if we need to be concerned about disease, then uh, I don't think Eric goes far enough when he says uh, decriminalization of prostitution. I think you have to legalize it. I don't like the government taking over things like that. I'd rather see the uh, the chemical companies and the drug companies take it over. They've got the stuff that'll cure you if you get something from their hookers. Well, right. You know, America's a capitalist society, and basically businesses will uh, form uh, around products that sell. That's why in this country you have a, you have a multi-million dollar sex industry. Uh, people want to read about it. People want to uh, see it. People want to do it. People want to uh, immerse themselves in it. We live in a sexual culture. That is uh, our nature. And in the freest country in the world, when we can make our choices about what products we want, what we want to do with our leisure time, well, it's quite clear. We want sex and plenty of it. And we are reaping the rewards of that with our many children that are being sexually abused and many children who are, uh, so many of them that are ending up on drugs and other problems. Because whenever you have prostitution, like in Las Vegas, when they began to crack down on the street prostitutes, they had a much lower problem with the drugs, a much lower problem with violence and property crimes. And so when you have prostitution, you have all of these other evils that come along with it, besides the evils of disease, which you and I have to end up paying for as taxpayers. Let me go to this young man here. Nancy, uh, does, do you recognize this man, Charles, the Philadelphia Eagle? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next, we get to the moment that caught everyone's attention. Mort asks Nancy Grace about the unicorn tattoo on her leg that says Satan. Does it say Satan on it? Does it say Satan on it? Huh? Does it say Satan? I asked you a question, bitch. Does it say Satan? Does it say Satan? And if it says Satan, do you love Satan? And if you love Satan, get your ass off this stage. You want it? You want to ask Nancy a question? Yeah, I'd like to ask you a question. probably answer yours the same as you answered mine. Somebody didn't tell me to ignore ignorance. I, I don't understand. I can't hear you. I don't understand. You look very presentable, except for the unicorn on your leg. I still can't hear you. You look like a presentable woman. Thank you. Except for the unicorn on your leg. But that was a mistake I made many whatever, years ago. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But how how can how can you sit tell us that you sit in a room, watch a man get dressed up in a woman's clothing? I'm not done. Watch a man get dressed up in woman's clothing, and you can tell sit here with a straight face and tell us and you just sit there and watch. Because I can't that's God's that. honest truth. I don't care whether you believe me or not, because I'm not here to impress you. Yeah. I'm concerned you don't a call girl. Pardon? It's just a fancy name for a prostitute. You can call it anything you want. Oh, a whore. Whatever you want to call it. A whore, too. You can go with a whore. They want to say whore? So we know what whore. your ignorance is now. And amazing, everyone who doesn't agree that prostitution and whoring is good yeah, is ignorant. Go ahead, pal. Uh, Morton, I want to just thank you for some uh, choice of quality programming. It's about time. 
Uh, secondly, let's just realize that uh, prostitution is one of the oldest professions. Let us get a reputable company or some aspect of government to control it, tax it, put those taxes to a worthy cause. The country certainly needs the help. God bless America. Morton, I love your Red Sox. Thanks, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now, maybe we can get... Maybe we can get a lady's point of Once the show is opened up for the audience to participate, a young woman grills Nancy Grace for her prostitute lifestyle. That's I, I'd just like to know that. How mixed, big mixed was your self esteem? Mixed feelings. How I was many brought times up. can you swallow your self esteem? And how little do you feel right now? And you're, wait, you're, you're, giving, you're suggesting that this is a way of life, a way to make your living, a way to feel good about yourself. If it's good for me, it, you know, I'm not saying it's good for you or anybody else out there. What I've chosen to do. Okay, you, so you, you think you should suggest and make this a career for other women? I'm sorry, what? Do you think that you should allow this to be a career for other women? If you're legal age and you're mine, you got all your mind together, whatever you decide to do is your business. So if you're 18 years old and you're still not a mature adult, I'm all say for 18. I'm thinking of anyone 21 or older. 21 or older? Yeah. What I'd like to know is how do you feel like as a person walking around knowing that you're a whore and a prostitute? Yeah. And I Look at you when he feels that you're First going out all, on dates watching other men. A whore or a prostitute, and I don't How can you? When he met you, was, uh, when I don't you were know. a whore maybe or a prostitute. Maybe, maybe he's got self-esteem, but of a P. Anyway, maybe he's got more than no, I, 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 I noticed one thing. We're going to take a break here in just a second, but I noticed one thing. When we said whore and prostitute, all the men applauded, but none of the women did. And, and you know what we're doing? We're hurting women here. That's and exactly I, right. I don't, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to hurt women. I don't want to hurt women. By the same token. Your whole I think they ought to put the Johns in prison if they're going to put the prostitutes in prison. We'll be right back. Break away for a commercial. Some of the guests of the Morton Downey Junior Show stay at the Meadowlands Hilton Hotel. Yeah, you turn check. That was before maybe the public was that age. But that was when, when age was starting to happen. As you can probably hear, here, my friends, the argument continues here. The prostitute on stage, the young lady who's upset by prostitution, debating with her. And again, you come down to no answer really being uh, given on the situation. Jeanine Hansen Triggs, uh, Jeanine Hansen, uh, who is uh, head of Eagle Forum in Nevada, says under no circumstances this type of situation. Mr. Cherry, of course, says, hey, this is the only way I can have sex. So you have to con- You've never made a mistake, I guess. No, I made plenty of mistakes. Okay, fuck the be legal after All right, and, uh, and I think I have to agree. I think I have to agree with uh, what Eric says. Uh, maybe we have to think of the exception rather than the rule. And maybe the exception is that there are friends and there are people we could prevent from having this disease. I gotta, I gotta tell you, you were excellent, all right? We missed a lot of what you said. We missed a lot of what you said. You were excellent, defended your cause very well. Eric, our other guest, Janine Hansen, and this gentleman, Fred Cherry. Uh, Fred, good luck to you, pal, all right? Don't get a disease, whatever you do. Nancy? Nancy had a lot of guts coming here. I appreciate her getting here. I think she has a lot of guts to be in the business you're in. I think you're really stupid, all right? I think you're really stupid. There has to be some balance here with a guy who can't get it and a girl who can't get it can get it legally and they don't go to jail. I don't know what the balance is yet. Maybe we'll come up with it in one of Eric's writings. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe for more analyses of viral moments and episodes from the Morton Downey Jr. Show. This video is brought to you by FunnySpecial.com and the at Radio Bam and at Bam Radio TikTok accounts.